Travelers and patrons, I welcome you, and I have come to you now with news. A project of mine I've been awaiting for quite some time. The Iron Realm Arena. Perhaps you've heard tell of it. Perhaps you've read some slight mention of it upon the Patreon page. But now I've decided it is at last time. I'm so excited and I can't wait to share what I have so far with you. Where the Iron Realm podcast leaves off. The Iron Realm Arena. A whole new podcast for patrons begins. And this game will be quite a bit different from the Character 8 campaign that you may have played, and indeed, somewhat different too, than the Dungeon Delve you may have pursued using the Maze Master series. For the Iron Realm Arena is focused on play with miniatures, a series of contests and battles strung together, fought in the realm of Oculara, a never-before-seen environment deep in the Iron Realm. I'm contemplating some all-new characters that will be featured in the roleplay for each episode. Although you, the player, will be creating your own unique tribe, not limited to just one player anymore, you will instead command for a leader, a defender, a specialist, and a scout. And there will be a great deal of flexibility within these roles. Hello, Abel Enzo, Maze Master. It is I, John Merle Holes, here again with another video of uh, your new product, Iron Realm Arena. And uh, I got some dice out from my Card King Pro immense dice bag with many pockets in order to play the first contest the hidden prisons and I fielded some miniatures and uh, have some standees for enemies uh, it's been quite quite an exciting uh, quite an exciting first adventure I was really uh, really enjoyed it um, I have been tracking everything my first level point win in the level point pool in my new printout that I got from FedEx uh, print online which is uh, a rendition of your book Dungeon Arena and Maze Master's Guide and uh, this one here uh, I used the same format I've been using spiral bound and it included quite a few pages um, I guess I'll stand up to get a better just overall view of this. So, um, the format's similar to the one I used for the Rival Tribe uh, in uh, Bardar's group. Um, it started out with the Tribe Tracker. Uh, this one here I continued because more than likely there will be many deaths in the arena. Uh, and then I have a bit of a tribal overview so far. I haven't decided on a name for the tribe yet. I wanted to play through the first combat. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of level points based on uh, if I do write-ups uh, for the, both the, uh, the contest and for profiles for my characters. Uh, my starting characters here uh, include Keltara, uh, who will be also played as a character aid by Lady Randa. Uh, one of your newest patrons, uh, an amazing uh, player uh, that I've known for, oh man, for a while now. And she is amazing. Uh, she is putting out a ton of writing for her character 8, Keltara, and some other characters that she's playing as. Now, what this means is that I have to go and try to keep Keltara alive in the arena. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, if Keltara... Uh, is to escape, she has to survive. Now we've come up with uh, what we might do to keep... You know what, maybe I'll turn this... I don't know, if I try to turn the camera, I'll probably mess things up. So I guess we'll just stick with this view. I'll just zoom out a bit. So, uh, yeah, if we try to keep... Uh, if 
something happens to Kaltara, we have to come up with a, a, an alternate uh, a plan. You know, character eight. You know, I suppose we could write something up. Uh, we did use the same stats though for Keltara and both, and how we did it, we did a little bit of a, a curve on this because we rolled up the four arena characters, and then Randa decided which one she wanted to use for Keltara. Um, well, I guess we got a little bit of a, a spoiler here, so I will move on. <laughs> uh, but you know, I've set this up very similar to how we've done the other one. Um, you know, you can see here we got a profile page. Um, I got a backstory page for each character, and you know, a heroic death page in case Keltar does die. You know, we do have that covered. Um, I'm using some of your uh, other. Uh, Ancestries from the um, tribe book. Um, I got a gnome uh, who will become a divine warrior named Burl. Um, and I have miniatures for all these too. I guess I didn't show you, but uh, you know, this was uh, this is Keltara here. Um, these these miniatures are actually really hard to come by. Uh, this one uh, is from Plain. Actually, several of these are from Planescape. Uh, this was Factual Pentar from the Planescape uh, setting. Um, Burl is this gnome uh, who's going to be the defender of the group. Keltara is the leader, even though she's a wizard. So there's Burl. And then we have um, a Zerum. The Zerum is named Zistatella. And Zistatella uh, represented currently by this kind of more kind of angular looking character here uh, uses pronouns they them um, that'll be explored more as uh, they go on their adventures I didn't do a whole lot of profiling to begin with because you know they're just meeting for the first time as with the arena cast um, the fourth character is a Unimai healer and this Unimai uh, one, one note here is the Unimai has a low intelligence, 5, minus 2. High wisdom, though, 17, plus 2. And uh, I'm going to maybe consider that, uh, you know, there's some sort of penalty with languages uh, or other things. Uh, but I should say and. And I'm going to consider it maybe like a neurodivergent sort of character. Uh, I don't have, of course, a Unimai. I, I went with a... Uh, tiefling, also from the Planescape setting. This was another factual, factual Riss from another faction in Sigil. Um, now she's a Unimai healer, and my Unimai healer, Valsi is her name, you know, will, will likely be a neurodivergent character. Um, for anyone watching this video, if you have any sort of neurodivergence that you think would work well with the suggestion of how I might be playing the healer, you know, I welcome you to be a uh, sensitivity reader uh, on my writing if it gets uh, produced. Uh, you could reach out to um, the Maze Master Abel Enzo, you know, to, about that, and he will let you know, you know, what you can do to, I guess, read the material. Uh, there's no payment involved, you know, I'm not getting paid to produce the writing. It's for fun. So if you want to do it, though, you know, I do want to try to be sensitive about these characters. Now, I do have a lot of other characters picked out, and these were characters I did roll up. Since they weren't in the first four, they were rolled up sequentially. So, you know, I have stats for all these characters. You know, I have, I have a rogue. Uh, you know, and, and all these stats were just as they were statted when I did the rules. Um, none of them... Uh, I didn't do any, like, you know, two-point spends to get a point in something else uh, to decide on the, the types. I just kind of looked at the stats when I rolled them and then gave them, uh, just added them, you know, um, into the book this way so that I could fill them out if I need to replace character. But they're all going to be sequential, so that was why I was able to roll them up ahead of time. You know, so it's just the rolls were made ahead of time, but that allowed me to put all the, the pages in here in the order that these characters would appear. There's another Unimai. Um, we 
know, we, 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 I'm trying to get through everybody. You know, I think that maybe there's maybe one character I didn't manage to get, but but in general, there they should all be in here before we get to the end here. And uh, it is a lot of pages. This was pretty expensive to print. Um, there's, you know, I hope in the future there will be a. Uh, a journal, something that uh, you put out, Maze Master, maybe again through a Kickstarter or something, because I'm sure that uh, the price would be a better deal than these. You know, it could probably be hard back in many other things compared to compared to this. Uh, at the end of this uh, section, I have the contest selector, uh, which I will fill out as I create new contests. Um, then I have an arena combat section. And uh, this one I divided by the contest with a foe tracker page. A, and, and you can see here that this was for the first contest for the uh, Psionic Stalkers. Um, their bases were in color. So, you know, red, orange. Well, I guess the other ones I already killed. These were from the final round, although I guess I've moved the characters now. Um, don't this, you know, this one here, I forgot to update his, his hit points, but he is at zero. Let's just uh, fix that there. It didn't really race very well, did it? Anyway, zero, they're all dead. Uh, and so I even did the color coding here with a little description of the miniature. Well, actually, I guess these were standees I used. One's actually a blue towering figure who, who I didn't show you, but. Um, none of these were painted. I did give myself points for finding a standee that sort of looked like the Psionic Stalkers. Um, I did have, you know, a write-up of the, how the combat went. Uh, no one got damaged that much. I actually have to remember to heal, um, because Valsi has laying on of hands. I can heal one of the characters one point. Um, and then, you know, we have these all given by contest. So I will just kind of jump ahead here to these real quick. So, uh, you know, and I know you have this, this great gallery of all these, uh, the current um, offering of the premium version of the Dungeon Arena Guide. So, you know, if anybody wants to get the gallery of all the art, you know, it's currently available to the end of February. Um, and what else do I have here? Oh, each 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 contest I had a uh, you know. In addition to this just intro page, I have a foe tracker, combat tracker, and then a write up page. Um, and then finally, just to finish off the section, I have a year tracker. Uh, and then I went into a history and legends section, which includes each campaign month uh, with a page for notes, facts of importance. So I did this for 12 of these. I'll just zoom out a bit more here. You know what? Again, I can't really turn the camera here, but I'll zoom out some so you can at least get a, get a better view of both pages at once. So um, after 12 of these, um, uh, there was a final facts of important page I added just so I could have the, my next divider on the same side as the other ones for role playing. And this one's just adventure write up pages. And these are continuations from the earlier pages. I kind of used a strategy guide format where for each chapter in your strategy guide you have one adventure write up page. And of course, that can go to you know somewhere else to write up the following ones. In your strategy guides, I know you have some uh, additional pages towards the back of each one. Uh, and so I've added a whole segment here of just adventure write-up pages to continue any stories that go beyond one page. Um, so try to be as prepared as possible. And this is one of the reasons why this is really expensive. I mean, you know, you can imagine printing all these pages in full color. I think it comes out to something like 52 cents a, a page in color at um, FedEx. So very, very expensive. Um, that's why, uh, you know, maybe there should be a black and white journal version of this um, with maybe just a, uh, a couple of color pages to make it pretty. Uh, who knows? Uh, Rand, I know, is going to be doing another uh, divider, for, you know, like another binder for the character eight 
campaign that she's doing, and hers is going to be a lot more cost effective, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that video when she does it. Um, oh, so then after uh, the uh, other section, I guess I just jumped past the title here. So I have starting the arena campaign as the divider, and for this it's contest creator uh, page and um, a creature profile potentially for that contest and uh, these creature profiles are actually going to double oh and the reason why I did it this way was just again if I decided to move these at a later point creature profile on both sides or vice versa contest creator on both both sides I can do that I can move them to a different book um, but each each uh, set of pages will be contest creator and creature profile uh, just reversed on the, the following page, subsequent page. And um, yeah, these actual creature profiles were actually, some of these will double for the Bardar's Tribe adventure. Um, and so, uh, because I didn't really add enough pages for that, I realized if I wanted to do 1d20 creatures, I would need some more. So I tried to add at least enough uh, to get me to 20. Um, and we're near, oh yeah, there's the end of the book. So there you go. I uh, hope you found that very exciting. I hope that everybody uh, wants to try out Arena. Uh, I know you're going to have a new contest every month, and I'm really looking forward to playing more. And that's it for now. Uh, see you in the light, hopefully, and uh, hopefully we can avoid the dark. So a couple more notes for all of you on the Iron Realm Arena. I'll tell you where I currently am with the project, and it is called the Iron Realm Solitaire Dungeon Arena and Maze Master's Guide, with the cover of the book already revealed, an attractive, topless warrior standing off against a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The arena can appear as a classic dungeon chamber of enormous size, or it can appear as an environment pulled from deep within the mind of one of the combatants by the Lord of Ice, a highly psionic and terrifying being who is determined to battle his charges against foes for the entertainment of its kingdom. Inside the book, some interesting things too. An introduction to this new gaming experience is given and an overview, too, about how it connects to former books in the Maze Masters series. In particular, the Iron Realm Solitaire Dungeon Arena and Maze Masters Guide is the sixth book in the Maze Masters series, being perhaps somewhat unique in that it opens up a whole new method of play, battling monsters, tracking contests one at a time, and finding a way with miniatures to fight your own Dungeon Arena campaign. I would say that the foundation of the game is quite a bit similar to the Dungeon Delves you might have played already using the Iron Realm Solitaire Dungeon Design and Maze Master's Guide. But there are a number of changes too, and so the changes, whilst drawing from the basic combat rules in the Iron Realm Solitaire Creature Creation and Maze Master's Guide, are unique to the arena setting. Another element that's fun is collecting the exact miniatures you desire for fighting your own arena battles, and it's probably pretty essential to have at least the four members of your arena tribe represented and perhaps you can get by in the beginning by substituting buttons or coins for some of their adversaries and foes. But the invitation to draw upon your miniatures collection is enticing indeed, and I'll be providing the maps you need in this book that you may print out on your own. Finally, what's truly unique is that each arena battle will be represented by its own podcast. Run the podcast... And while you listen, simulate the combat using your newly acquired maps and your own carefully curated miniatures to play out the battle and determine the victory or the deaths of your character's arena tribe. Oh, 
so much coming together for the Iron Realm at this time. Keep your eyes open for more from the Iron Realm Arena. Join me in this new exploration and take your Iron Realm journey to all new heights. A whole new way to play and let me know how it's going for you. This will truly be the greatest Iron Realm adventure yet. Now available on DriveThruRPG, the Iron Realm Dungeon Arena and Maze Master's Guide. It's the sixth book in the Maze Master series, and it builds upon the Maze Master's books that have come before. Take this offering, get the maps you need, the rules for Dungeon Arena, a bonus Gladiator's Guide, and the very first podcast of the series. All of this is ready and waiting for you for less than you've ever imagined. Available now to you. Partake of a whole new way to play, an advanced way to play, the Iron Realm. <laughs> I'll see you in the arena of Ocularum.